everyone. Welcome to .NET 2020, usually in Spain, this year virtual. I'm Maddie Legere, and today we're going to be talking about how to boost your Xamarin development productivity. So we have a lot of things that have come out in Xamarin in the past year or more, crazy long time. Uh, my, my colleague David Ort now is giving a talk as well at this conference about Xamarin Forms 5, which is coming out shortly. That's a bunch of new features in the SDK to make your apps prettier and more performant and all the things, share more code. But this session is going to be focused on productivity, so how to make your development life easier when you're writing Xamarin apps. Uh, to understand what Xamarin is, you should understand what .NET is. So hopefully, if you're at a conference called .NET 2020, you might have heard of .NET before, but it really is your platform for building anything. So a lot of times when we think of .NET, we think desktop with UWP, or we think web. Sometimes we might think um, you know, .NET Core apps, console, and all that. But really, you can target any kind of platform with .NET. And it's all unified. So with .NET Standard, you have all these libraries that are shared and can target all these things. Plus, you have the infrastructure when it comes to languages like C Sharp and F Sharp and compilers like the .NET um, Core Compiler and Mono. All of these things can target all of these different platforms using tools you know and love like Visual Studio and VS Code and the command line. So it makes it a really powerful platform to build apps regardless of what you're trying to target. But what Xamarin in specific focuses on is mobile. So Xamarin is the mobile solution for .NET. And really, when you think about it, it's an open source app platform from, from Microsoft for building modern and performant iOS, Android, Mac OS, watch OS, and TV OS apps all with .NET. It targets some of the Android things too, like Android Wear, um, Android TV, because anything that you can do natively with Java or Kotlin or, or Swift um, and Objective-C for Android and iOS respectively, you can do with .NET and Xamarin. And because of its flexibility and because it is so tied into the .NET ecosystem, it is something that is greatly trusted by enterprises all over the place. If you're already a .NET shop, maybe you have your backend running in .NET Core, or you have something, you have an existing desktop app, you might have an ASP.NET Core web app. Xamarin is a really easy transfer of skills to get your developers making mobile apps that are native with native performance right away with C Sharp or F Sharp. Um, and they still have access to the native APIs and the native UI stacks. So it doesn't feel like an app that's running somewhere else or an app that's running in a container or something. It's all native, which is great. And plus it's cross-platform. So you can build UI cross-platform with Xamarin Forms. And if you're interested in Xamarin Forms, go see Dave's talk about Xamarin Forms 5. It's fantastic. Um, but you can also access, access native device APIs sh in a shared code way with Xamarin Essentials. So that means you can go and start um, you know, turning on and off the flashlight, seeing what the accelerometer values are, all of those things in one, one area in your shared code. So with Xamarin Apps, most of our developers right now are sharing over 80% of code across all their devices, whether that's iOS, Android, Windows, desktop, all, all the things. Um, and you still get to use all of the .NET standard goodies that you're used to. So I know I recently switched a bunch of my apps over to the new system, JSON, uh, and I had, a, I had a really good time doing that. So you can share a lot of your skills over. And this is what that kind of looks like at the top level. So you have your shared C Sharp business logic, which is what you know calls your APIs, whatever it is. But then you also have your shared UI with Xamarin Forms, your shared device APIs with Xamarin Essentials. And of course, you always can go into the native platforms in C Sharp when it comes to device specific functionality. Um, and if you're not a design person, I'm not really a design person. We have a bunch of amazing component vendors that work really hard to uh, create controls for you that are fast and good looking and show all the data you need to possibly show. So check these folks out if you're uh, getting started and, and you need kind of a helping hand with your UI. But this talk is not about UI. This talk is about ways to boost your productivity. So there's four pillars I like to look at when I think about how to make our developers more productive when it comes to Xamarin. And that's coding, building the app, deploying the app, and then iterating on it. So when you want to make a change and see that change really quickly. Uh, and, and to start doing all these things, you have to actually get to code. And so we made Xamarin twice as fast to install and way, way, way smaller. So you can go into the Visual Studio installer now and only have to add six, gig six gigs to add a Xamarin install, 
which has really lowered the barrier to entry for folks who are already using Visual Studio and doing .NET app development, but might have been hesitant to try Xamarin because it was a 23 gig install. And so it's smaller, it's faster, and we have totally revamped the new app uh, screen and, and interaction menu. So a lot of times when you come over from desktop, you have a specific way that you're used to building UIs. A lot of times it's, um, you know, maybe, maybe tabs, maybe fly out, but usually it's all, you click on a button and it takes you to the next page and then you can go back or it pops up a pop-up. Mobile is different. Mobile has different interactions than what you see on web or desktop. And so we've actually learned that a lot of developers didn't know what a fly out was or what that was going to do. Um, or what a tabbed app looked like, what that was going to create for them in code. So we create, made these great little animations. It's really easy to see exactly what you're getting now. You don't have to worry about guessing and making a new app and then starting over. We've also revamped the uh, adding or creating an emulator or Android device for testing your app. So in this case, um, this is James's demo. This is an old video from James Montemagno. It's, he's using the new walkthrough experience, and he says he has an Android device to use. And actually, if, you, if we pause this right here, you see it tells you exactly what to do to set up your Android device for development. So we saw a lot of developers getting stuck. They'd plug in their device, and they couldn't figure out how to get it to start deploying. Or they'd try to run an emulator, and they didn't have Hyper-V on, and they had to go turn on Hyper-V and do all these things um, to get their device to start debugging, when really it's a simple process if you know exactly what to Google. So we put the Googling in the product for you. It, does it, it tells you exactly what to do to turn on developer mode, to enable your USB debugging. It helps you connect it in. And then you can quickly get your app up and running, um, plugged in, and start deploying to it right away while this build is happening here. So, and James has a lovely monkey background too, which is nice. All right, next slide. So now you've gotten to the code faster. You know how to deploy your app. Um, you, you know exactly what app you're building, but you want to start writing it. And one thing that happens to me a lot, especially in the remote days, is I cannot think of what I am trying to type. So I type like three letters and I'm like, what am I, what is this called? Is this a lab, is a stack panel stack? That's what IntelliCode's for. So IntelliSense you've had forever in Visual Studio. That's what pops up a list of alphabetized suggestions. Um, that could possibly be valid in the context you're typing. IntelliCode brings the most popular of those suggestions to the top of the list. So you can see right here, hopefully my mouse is working. These are starred. It's because the first thing a lot of people put in a content page is a view or a layout container to hold those things. So a stack layout, a grid, scroll view, relative layout, those all pop up right at the top of the first opening tag in your content page. Same thing within a button, the most common properties on it, text, background color, command. So it makes it really easy if you're coming from a different XAML flavor maybe, or if you're just a little bit rusty around the edges like me and you can't remember what you're supposed to type, IntelliCode's got you, it'll help you write out. And this is in Visual Studio Windows right now, but we've also been doing a lot of work to optimize the code editor in Mac. So not only is the C-sharp editor itself optimized with things like left to right support and emoji support, very important, uh, different languages, but the IntelliSense editor in Mac is optimized as well to have the same IntelliSense engine that we have on Windows now running on the Mac. So fuzzy matching, um, getting static resource completion, all these great things. So if you're a VS Mac developer, um, definitely check out the XAML IntelliSense it is super, super great the way we've revamped it over the past you know, six months to a year maybe, and it keeps getting better. So you're coding faster than ever. You're like, great, I'm writing this app, fabulous. Um, I want to build my app now. Well, building mobile apps has always been a little bit of a challenge because you have to build not only the actual code, but you have to build all the device stuff. You have to bundle in .NET with it. Um, and you have to put it all on the device. And that putting it on the device is called deploying. So we actually split deploy out from build because build is not just, or deploy is not just about speed, but it's also about size. And we looked at how to make builds a lot faster for our developers. So we took, this is, uh, this is actually quite outdated data, but we profiled when we started making a bunch of these updates um, about this time, 
last year, maybe, this, this time a year and a half ago. Um, we profiled from Visual Studio 2017 to Visual Studio 2019 um, and some of the improvements we made. And we had shaved off 15 seconds when it comes to the first build and five seconds or so when it comes to a deploy. So those were great improvements and we've continued to improve this um, even more. So we haven't actually been able to benchmark this app again, but we're looking at getting updated numbers and hopefully we'll write a blog about it soon. Um, and with .NET 5 and .NET 6, which we'll talk about a little bit towards the end, we're gonna see even more improvements in these times. But th this was really just the beginning and um, it's we're saving people like something like a couple hours a week in build times that we're waiting for. Something else you might have heard of, and we'll talk about a little bit more in the iterate faster section, is hot restart. And hot restart is kind of a twofold thing. The, the key of hot restart, the way it started, was that we realized we didn't have to redeploy your entire app every time you made a change. So we could just put the code that's changed and inject it into that app, restart that app, um, and, and that rebuild and redeploy is a lot faster. So that's a really cool thing. You can see the numbers at the bottom that the initial build and deploys are, are you know, not too much uh, faster with hot restart. Actually, the initial deploy is a little bit longer because it has to set the app up. But the incremental build and deploys are significantly faster. I mean, the incremental build is from 37 seconds to two and a half seconds. That's half a minute every time you want to build your app. And what's cool about Hot Restart is that you can build your Xamarin Forms iOS apps and debug it directly to the device over your Windows machine because it's not rebuilding and re-signing the package every single time. So that's just for development. You can't do that for, um, you know, obviously distributing your app and you're always going to need a Mac to do Apple development. That's just how it works to do things like set entitlements and um, permissions in your app or add app icons, you need your Mac for that. But if you have an iOS app in your Xamarin Forms project and you wanna just debug and test and change code, change resources, change references, all those things, you can do that with just your PC, not connected to your Mac and your iPhone device, your iOS device plugged right in using Hot Restart. So right now it's just that iOS with Xamarin Forms on Windows. We are looking to bring it over to the Visual Studio for Mac IDE, as well as expand it to Android. Um, but, you know, all the platforms work differently. So it's a, it's a couple different solutions we're looking at here. Um, and this is still in preview, but I'll show you folks how to turn it on in a little bit. So let's talk about deploying. I said build and deploy are kind of two separate beasts. Um, a lot of times when we make builds faster, we make deploys a little bit faster. But once you've deployed the app, there's a certain amount of uh, timing that still has to happen before you can actually start interacting with your app. And the big one there is startup time. So we've deployed the app, it's launching, it's launching, it's launching, and then it opens up. So we've introduced something called startup tracing, which helps uh, um, link assemblies that don't need to be loaded every time the app starts that are going to stay static the whole time uh, and actually greatly reduce your your startup time. So in this one, we have a 16 meg app that starts in a little bit under three seconds. And then there's just plain old ahead of time compilation, which means we're taking not just the assemblies that don't change, but everything and linking it all ahead of time. That is much faster startup, but a much larger APK. And then there's this profiled AOT, we call it, but it's it, the feature is Android startup tracing. And it kind of blends the full ahead of time compilation model with the normal just in time compilation model to give you the sweet spot of a fast startup speed, but not really a lot of upsize in the APK. You can turn that on. The, this is a release feature. This is not something I use for debugging because if you you know pr uh, compile things before time, things like hot reload won't work. But you can turn this on for your release builds, right? And the Android build projects just check it off and uh, and start using it right away and see how much faster it makes your app start up. Whoop! It's that checkbox. There's another thing when it comes to deployment that's not actually time related. So I know it's been code faster, build faster, deploy faster. But one thing that uh, we also work a lot on is app size. 
So the deployment is faster if the app is smaller, but also in in your users and your end users experience, the app is going to be, uh, you know, they're more likely to download something that's smaller. It's going to take up less space. So we have brought over the ability to use Android app bundles. And the way Android app bundles work is they look at how a regular Android APK is set up. And with Android, it bundles everything you need in. It'll bundle uh, all the possible assets for screen densities, all of the language kits you might need and resources, all of the ABIs for the device you're on. Um, but really, an end user has a certain subset of those that it needs. So App Bundles takes the subset for your device and for your profile and optimizes your APK just for you. So in this case, it's an ARM64 device with French and English. It's a XXX HDPI, um, and that's the APK it puts over. It doesn't put over any of the other resources or languages. And that can give you a 20 to 50% size reduction in the APK that actually gets delivered to your end user. So super, super helpful when it comes to deployment. Um, really not only speeds up the time it takes to download it or, or mush it over your device, but makes it uh, smaller and, and take up less space on your end user's device. So you're coding, you're building, you're deploying, and then we get into the iteration loop. And a lot of times when we look at developer problems, they say you need to make our builds faster. And we do that, right? We try and make your builds faster. But at some point, the builds are not going to be able to get much faster. So while the engineering teams work on making builds blazing fast, we also have been thinking about ways to make it easier to avoid builds altogether. And that's where this idea of iteration and iterating faster comes in. So you can uh, you know, run your app, build, deploy it, make a change. And then when you want to see that change, you're going to stop your app, rebuild it, redeploy it, and see it again. Well, that's some time that we can probably save you if we can show you that change without forcing a rebuild and redeploy. So I'm actually going to flip over devices here. Oh, clicked back. I'm going to flip devices here, um, and we're going to go through a demo on all of the iteration tools we have in Xamarin and Xamarin Forms in this demo to make your life easier when you're writing your apps. So. Okay, so I am on my second device now. This is my laptop. Um, I've got internal preview running, so some cool new stuff to show you. Um, and it's Visual Studio 2019. So this preview I'm on right now is 16.9. The one that is in the preview channel right now is 16.8. So this will be coming out shortly. Whenever 16.8 becomes the uh, stable release, 16.9 becomes the preview release. But I wanted to show you some of the things that are in 16.9 and not quite in 16.8 yet today. So we're running some of the latest stuff. Um, some of these things that I'll show you are available now or were available a couple of releases ago. So I'll make sure to call those out kind of as, as we see them. But the first thing I want to show you is probably the thing I'm most excited about when it comes to development improvements we've made on the Xamarin team. And it is the ability to do XAML hot reload on a UWP uh, app or a Xamarin Forms UWP project head. So this is just the file new app, nothing fancy. I've got my single XAML page, Android, iOS, and UWP projects. But you can see now that as with any Xamarin Forms app, I can debug it onto UWP. But previously, Hot Reload used the Mono Debugger. And Mono, the Mono Debugger, which is part of .NET, it's the one that's specialized to talking to Android and iOS devices. But over the past year, we have worked really closely with the Windows uh, XAML tooling team, the folks who built UWP and WPF Hot Reload. And we worked on consolidating our implementations so that you could swap out the debugger based on the target with your Xamarin Forms app. So now, you see I have this bright blue header up here. I'll go into my XAML. Oh, I had some uh, build stuff come up. And then I'll change this from blue to purple. And I don't even have to hit save. I just do have to click out of my uh, suggestions here. And it's going to pop right back up with the new color on my UWP app. So that's super exciting. Um, we've, we've heard a lot of people asking for this and with 
the consolidated implementations of the hot reloads, so of our XAML hot reload for Android and iOS, and for the UWP and WPF hot reload. With merging them together, we've also been able to expose some great functionality in the Xamarin form side of things, like this live visual tree. So what's really cool is I can go in and see right now what elements are creating the page that I have. So I can see with my UWP app, I've got a main page that's created for me um, as part of the UWP project head, but I can also go into my application and see the UI that's being built out onto this page right here. So I have a label, I have I probably a stack layout, we can check right here, yep, a stack layout, and then I can click this button and go to where that stack layout is defined in my code. So if you have used the UWP or WPF kind of native hot reloads before, you might be familiar with this feature and now it works with all the Xamarin Forms targets you could possibly want. What's also cool about that is we've simplified the settings page. So this is in 16.8, which is in the preview channel as of right now, um, and, and soon will be promoted to stable. But we put all of the hot reload settings under debugging hot reload. So you can enable it here for WPF, UWP, including Xamarin Forms, Android and iOS, Xamarin Forms. You can switch it back to applying hot reload on the document save, which is how it was before. Now it just does it automatically. It's totally a preference thing. It depends on my mood. Um, and then there's some common settings and some features for WPF and UWP hot reload that we haven't brought into Xamarin hot reload yet. And then there's the Xamarin form section. So if you want to use this new hot reload method, the one that doesn't use saving and that, that will soon support uh, UWP, you can go actually now into Visual Studio 16.7 and go to the original hot reload settings page, which is what is still in our documentation. It's um, tools, options, Xamarin hot reload and hit changes only. Changes only will turn on the live visual tree and it will do the non-save kind of faster re-architected version of hot reload. Um, full page is what we've used before. So this is still a preview feature. If you're having issues with changes only, you can always switch back. Um, but the live visual tree is in 16.7, so you can start testing that out. It's UWP support that's not out quite yet, although I wanted to show it to you because I know it's very exciting. So let's turn on or check that another really cool feature is turned on. And this is one I talked about a little bit earlier. So I'll go into environment preview features. This is also like my favorite menu in Visual Studio. It's just things that teams are working on that they don't want to like turn on for sure yet, but you can try out. Very cool stuff. Um, and in here is one called, oh, where did it go? Enable Xamarin Hot Restart. So the reason I have already turned it on is because I'd have to restart the IDE after I turn it on. But this is that build and deploy uh, just puts what's changed onto the app, that feature. And this lets us do some really cool things when it comes to developing iOS on Windows. So I'll close out of this. I will switch from my UWP target to my iOS target. Make sure that I'm on an iPhone CPU. And it pops up right here with my iPhone. So I'm signed in right now to this Visual Studio instance with my Apple developer account. Um, you need to have one. You need to pay for one to distribute to the App Store um, and to provision devices and all that stuff. So I just logged in with that account into Windows, verified it. Um, and now I actually can see my iPhone right here plugged into my PC. So I'm going to switch back to camera video for a second so I can prove it to you. This is my iPhone. Very exciting. And I'm going to use an app called Reflector, which is a third party app. I think it's by like a company called Air Squirrels. I'm going to use that to mirror my iPhone onto my PC here. So you can see kind of both at the same time. So it's going to take a second. I'm going to click on the AirPlay code, type in the AirPlay code Reflector gives me, hit OK. Great. Now you can see my iPhone. Very excited. And I will shrink this a little bit and move it to the side. Oh, let's go. Boop. Okay. Shrink my IDE so that we can see that. Perfect. Okay, great. So, got my iPhone mirrored right here. This is it. I'm swiping. Perfect. And I've already deployed this .NET Spain uh, blank app onto it, but I'm going to go ahead and delete it to prove to you 
delete, that it does not to be, need to be installed on the device already. There's no Mac connected, so I'm just going to go in, deploy it straight to my iPhone, and it is going to start this process here. So what it's doing is it's building the project the normal way, and then it's going into my Apple development account, getting my code signing key and my provisioning profile, and making sure that I'm allowed to deploy apps to iOS devices. And then it's actually starting the work to package it and deploy it from my PC into my iPhone. So I know the thing that I talked about earlier when it kind of comes to build and deploy times is how much hot restart makes your life easier when it comes to speed. Um, it is a much faster rebuild and a much faster redeploy, but it also makes your life easier because you don't have to pair to a Mac or anything to start developing for iOS. So it is uh, going in, it's just checking all the Apple services, it's creating an IPA file, and it is now pushing that over to the device. You can see in the bottom left there, it's deploying. Cool. All right, now it's gonna ask me to open it in just a second. There we go. It says, please launch. Uh, I'm gonna launch it. And there's my app right there, running with my new uh, purple, purple header that I changed when I was using UWP Hot Reload um, right here on my iPhone. And so I still have XAML Hot Reload here. I can go in and change this from purple to, you know, something else, green. Oh, don't hit save, it'll still change. Um, I have my IntelliCode and that all works. So if I hit space after label, it's gonna suggest to me, oh, I should set horizontal options or binding context. That's what most people do with a label. I'm not gonna change anything right now. And I also have that live visual tree. So I can go into my application here and see the same thing I saw with UWP. I can see that it's a stack layout with a frame and three labels in it. And I can go into that frame and see that other label. And I can go and click on that, bring me to source, all the tools all for Android, iOS, and UWP. Very exciting, um, and hopefully makes it a lot easier for you to build and deploy and then iterate on your UIs uh, quicker than ever. Plus, with Hot Restart, if I wanted to change my C-sharp code and then restart the app or maybe add an image, add a, add a font file, all I have to do is hit this little restart button right here. And now that the app is already installed on my device, it takes somewhere between five, 10, 15 seconds to just rebuild it, stick it back on and redeploy it. So you remember waiting with me for the first one just a couple minutes ago. This is how quick it happens the second time. It's already done, launching. It's gonna ask me to launch it. Bam, there we go. Much faster. Cool. All right, I'm gonna flip back to the slides here and we're gonna talk about some of the stuff that's coming up. So at the beginning of this, I talked about .NET. And .NET 5 is coming out in uh, November. Yeah, .NET Conf is in November, very exciting. And .NET 5 is the first step we are taking towards what we call the one.NET vision. And the one.NET vision is the idea that, you know, we have a couple different .NET tool chains, a couple different ways to do project files, a couple different base class libraries. You might be on .NET Framework, you might be on .NET Core, you might be on Mono and Xamarin, um, but we want to make a single SDK, one base class library, and a unified tool chain for all .NET developers. And this is going to happen as a kind of wave from .NET 5 to .NET 6. So .NET 5 is going to start with, um, you know, moving everything from framework and core into this very, very basic .NET 5 library, and then you can add everything else you need. It makes it really, really small. And then throughout .NET 6, we're going to be adding cross-platform native UI, cross-platform web UI. We're going to do investments into cloud native, and we're going to continue, as always, to improve speed and size and Azure service integration. Um, and really what that's going to mean is that not you don't have to pick Xamarin or UWP or anything anymore. You can write a cross-platform native app with .NET and um, run it anywhere. And so the, the native UI layer that .NET is using is Xamarin Forms. So that's that second item here. Um, but that also gives us a lot of opportunities to reinvent the way we look at doing cross-platform development for Xamarin Forms developers today. 
So .NET MAUI, you might have heard of at Build or after .NET multi-platform app UI, is the evolution of Xamarin Forms that applies to all of .NET. So desktop and Mac and all the things. Um, and there are a couple things we're doing with .NET MAUI in the .NET 6 timeframe to make your development experience really easy. So first and foremost, we want to have a single project. So in my demo, you saw I had to switch between my iOS project and my, my Windows project as the startups, depending on what I wanted to um, deploy to. Well, with, with the SDK style projects, you can actually use .NET multi-targeting. And you see I have all my target frameworks right here, just in the project file in one line, one line so I don't have to switch between a ton of stuff. Um, and that definitely makes it easier to uh, quickly test on different devices. And also system.maui would be the Xamarin Forms evolution namespace and system.devices is a typo, would be Xamarin Essentials. These are still um, very much in uh, um, development too. Like these, these names and ideas might change. We're really looking for feedback all the time on this thing, but I wanted to give you all a sneak peek on how much development will continue to improve. Um, so yeah, this is this is what I was mentioning before. Instead of switching between all your target projects, there are right here. So you've got David's iPhone, a Pixel emulator, and your Windows device all in one drop down, really quickly. Multi deploy, hot reload them all at the same time. See all the live visual trees. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be a good time. Um, and my per personal favorite thing about the single project uh, concept of .NET Maui is the ability to handle all of my resources in one place. So when I talk about resources, I usually think things like images and fonts, which are what are shown here. Um, and the idea with .NET MAUI is that you'll be able to have one image, drop it into this single project, and it'll compile down to the right type of image and compile the right way for whatever platform you're targeting. So you won't have to have three different images for your iOS, Android, and Windows projects. It'll just be in one place. And likewise with fonts, um, this is a pain point we see a lot with developers that, you know, you have to add the same file a couple different times so that it gets deployed onto each device appropriately. But with single project, we really want to fix that and make it as easy as possible to do uh, all your resources in one place. And finally, what happens to my platform specific code? Good question. Um, a lot of developers will write things like custom renderers or specific device functionality in C Sharp because you do have that native API access in C Sharp um, without having to switch languages. So if you don't have your, your project heads anymore, if you don't have your Android and iOS project, that code can actually just live in this single project with everything else. So this is not exactly what it's going to look like. Like I said, this is all uh, totally like under development and we're looking for feedback regularly. Um, and if you think this is a good idea, if you think naming things .android.cs is enough of a differentiator or if it should be a different file, whatever it is. But the idea is that you will have all your code in one place, you'll have one project, you'll have one copy of all your resources, and everything will be really, really easy to pull in without adding different project references. You'll have multi-targeting, it'll be SDK style projects. All this glorious stuff will be coming to you in .NET 6. So like I said, .NET 5 is this fall, .NET 6 is the long-term support version is next fall. Um, very exciting. And, it, and even if you're not a Xamarin developer right now, you're going to see a bunch of improvements regardless of where in the .NET ecosystem you kind of spend your time with the one .NET vision. Something else that I'm really excited about uh, with .NET 6 is the idea of using command line to write your Xamarin apps. So in this example, we're using the .NET CLI to create a new MAUI app and it creates that app for you. So this was, so, you know, that's all preview. I'm gonna say that a bunch. I have said that a bunch, but um, this was a separate demo we showed at Build. You can go back and watch it of creating a Xamarin Forms project as it is today. So the, the separate project heads and all that in the command line on a Mac, very cool, using the .NET CLI. So the system Maui template here still had that Android and iOS app, but the idea is that those will go away too. You'll have a way to migrate all of your stuff over. It's going to be super nice. Um, you'll have the upgraded project files, and then you can use the command line to create new apps, restore your NuGets, all that great stuff. So I'm very excited about the future of all things Xamarin. Um, 
all the stuff happening and and coming out and uh, all the stuff I showed you today. So just to recap, you saw a little bit about IntelliCode, uh, the new XAML and C-sharp editors on the Mac. You learned a little bit about Android startup tracing, um, Android app bundles. Uh, oh my goodness, so many things. The hot restart. So that's the ability to de de develop an app from your Windows device straight onto your iPhone and also rebuild and restart way faster. Um, and also XAML Hot Reload, which now supports UWP. So you can see a lot of this stuff on the Xamarin blog or in the Xamarin documentation, docs.microsoft.com. But feel free anytime to reach out on Twitter at MaddieLegere1, and I am more than happy to answer your questions. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. This is a really exciting time to be a .NET developer, and there's so much great content I've seen um, for this week. So definitely enjoy it, and hopefully we'll be in touch and talk more about this stuff soon. Thanks.